OpenAI is officially a spook. Customers' trust is out the window, and its IPO is afoot. Do we believe? In this episode, we'll get to the bottom of this and more. Like Elon Musk's robots in a factory, or Starship's next stage launch, and even Dubai police getting cyber trucked up. Strap in, folks, because we are about to jiggle. This just in, looks like OpenAI has an unexpected and possibly very serious competitor. This is a prime example of what happens when you push your partners overboard. Ilya Sudskover, co-founder and former senior researcher of OpenAI, announced the launch of its very own safe superintelligence project. The only stated goal of the organization is to create safe superintelligence, which also happens to be the sole product of the project. No mention as to what or how that'll look like, no mention of military collaboration either, but the company said it has offices in Palo Alto and Tel Aviv. However, Sudskover, along with Daniel Gross, former AI chief at Apple, and Daniel Levy, also former OpenAI whiz, clearly state their game plan. Quote, our singular focus means no distractions by management overhead or product cycles, and our business model means safety, security, and progress are all insulated from short-term commercial pressures. End quote. The company is currently recruiting and promises to go, go gadget growth ASAP. So stock up on popcorn, folks. We're about to witness something beautiful. And subscribe to Pro Robots for more breaking news in the world of high tech. OpenAI has introduced former NSA director Paul Nakasani into its board of directors. This instantly ruffled some feathers among millions of ChatGPT users thinking the same thing at the same time. Surveillance. Considering this took place after the complete disbanding of the group dedicated to ensuring the safe use of AI in the company, should we be more surprised? After all, Sam Altman squeezed out not only Ilya Sutskever, but also Jan Laika and virtually everyone who worked in security. And to add insult to injury, Sam then claimed he would personally oversee the matter. Given Sam's desire to make OpenAI a profitable and influential global corporation, we can take his word for it, right? Can't we? Anybody? At the same time, there's another side to this. In addition to running the NSA, Nakasani was the head of US Cyber Command, the cybersecurity arm of the Department of Defense. Sounds like a conspiracy theorist's wet dream. Of course, this hiring could also indicate that OpenAI is very concerned about potential attack threats. Remember how the company just recently fired Leopold Aschenburner from its board after he sent out a memo citing, quote, major security incident. He called the company's security system woefully inadequate. Is this not a Hollywood script or what? At the same time, even if Nakasani takes over the company's cybersecurity, that doesn't mean he won't also oversee other issues related to user data. After all, ChatGPT has a huge audience all over the world. To put this in perspective, OpenAI's annual revenue reached $3.4 billion, doubling since last year. This is also an indication of what Altman is aiming for after all. And he himself is already openly stating that he wants to remake OpenAI from a non-profit to a fully commercial organization. By the way, in this case, the current board of directors of the non-profit will lose control over the company and Sam Altman will be able to pretty much do whatever he wants. Also, the transition towards this new way of handling things will allow the company to conduct an IPO or an initial public offering on the stock exchange. And every time you say the word money, Apple employees get goosebumps. Don't quote me on that one, but it turns out that the recent deal with Apple to integrate ChatGPT into the company's devices will allegedly not bring OpenAI any money. Because Apple will not pay. However, the company is sure that the fact of integration itself will be a big step forward for OpenAI and could potentially bring the company a lot of profit in the future, since Apple intends to sign revenue sharing agreements with developers of AI systems. As a result, the iPhone maker will get, quote, a share from AI partners monetizing results on Apple's platforms. For example, right now, the ChatGPT app for iOS includes a subscription option for which Apple receives between 15 and 30% commission. 
One more thing about OpenAI and let's turn the page. It's reported that for a breakthrough in AI training, the company will purchase fusion energy. For this purpose, following Microsoft, OpenAI has entered into an agreement with Helion Energy, a developer of compact fusion reactors. Helion already has an experimental plasma gas pedal that heats deuterium and helium-3 to 180 million Fahrenheit or 100 million degrees Celsius. This plasma is then compressed using a magnetic field until a fusion reaction takes place. This bad boy is housed in something that is no larger than the size of a shipping container. However, the company does not have an economically viable process for generating this energy. Right now, it spends more than it receives. Nevertheless, the company promises to build and connect this miniature power plant to the grid in the next five years. Moving on, Tesla reported on their results of the first few months of 2024 and among some of the achievements. Supervised full self-drive FSD using end-to-end -end neural networks is being rolled out to customers who have purchased or subscribed to the service in the US and Canada. Yay! And deliveries of the updated Model 3 are on their way in North America. Meanwhile, the number of power walls installed worldwide has reached over 600,000 units and the Model Y received the highest possible safety rating from the IIHS. Also, Tesla produced its sixth millionth car and the company's customers have driven more than 1.6 billion miles or 2.5 billion kilometers using FSD. And finally, Cybertruck production hit the 1,000 vehicle per week mark. Congratulations, Tesla! Over the past two years, three major versions of the Optimus robot design and four versions of the robot's arm have been developed. At the same time, the robot moves autonomously around Tesla's offices and labs on a daily basis, and two robots are actually performing tasks at the company's factory autonomously. And the kicker, Musk's personal achievement here, the shareholders approved his promised compensation of $45 billion. That's right, with a B. Although no one believed it, the shareholders thought that Elon deserved it after all. What do you guys think of this payday? I bet somebody's gonna say, yeah, but taxes eat that up. Check out Bill Hicks and his bit on taxes if you're looking for a good laugh. More pleasant news for the company was the fact that Dubai Police General Command stocked up their fleet of luxury tourist police patrol cars with several Cybertrucks. And as for the entrepreneur's Starship project, the fifth test flight of Starship is scheduled for the end of July. And during it, engineers will try to catch the first stage with the help of its tower. But in case something happens to it, a second one is already being installed at the Starbase. Not everything is as rosy though, here's the sour grapes. Tesla investors sued Musk for creating the company XAI. What gives? Well, Elon, having caught fire with his new idea of creating an AI that competes with GPT, began to channel money and talent into it, siphoning away both from Tesla. At least, that's how it seems to some investors. At the same time, they're sure that Musk himself, as well as the Tesla board of directors, have enriched themselves at the expense of the new company, while they have gotten zilch and perhaps are even looking at a loss. In general, Musk's life will never be boring, or calm for that matter. To reassure investors, the entrepreneur said that next year Tesla will not only start producing Optimus robots for sale, but will also employ about a thousand humanoids at its factories. This will lead to a significant increase in the company's value. Moreover, it will make it one of the most valuable companies in the world and be worth 10 times more than the current market leader. Wouldn't it be great if we could make bets on Musk's predictions? Somebody, please, take this idea, set it up, and run with it. On to other news, the analytics company Govini presented a report stating that the US is far behind China in AI development, which jeopardizes the ability to win a potential conflict with the PRC. According to the report, China is already ahead of the US in 13 out of 15 critical tech industries, only one of which is AI. Govini notes that in 2023, 65% of funding for AI, machine learning, and natural language processing in the US was still going to R&D, rather than deploying these technologies into current military systems. Quote, It's time to stop treating AI as just a science project. End quote by Tara Murphy Doherty, Govini's executive. 
Check out our previous in-depth video about this topic found in the description below. Meanwhile, Japanese engineers from the University of Tokyo have published a video in which their humanoid robot Musashi sits in the driver's seat and drives a 2012 Toyota Comms. This way, the researchers wanted to show an alternative future where you don't have to drive a car, but not because it drives itself, but because a robot is behind the wheel. Musashi is a skeletal muscular humanoid developed in 2019 as a testbed for training control systems. Skeletal muscular in this case means that the robot precisely replicates the average human not only in height and weight, but also in its body structure. The humanoid's head contains two high-res video cameras, one for each eye. Five fingers on Musashi's hands turn the steering wheel in line with its training software and sensors data and can also pull the handbrake, start the ignition, and control turn signals, while its feet step on the brake and gas pedals. The project team has equipped the car with a Wi-Fi router and an Intel NUC PC which runs an image recognition module as well as a servo drive, although in the future all of this should be placed inside the body of the humanoid. What do you guys say, a driverless car or a self-driving car chauffeured by a robot? And Northrop Grumman has once again reminded us about its giant underwater drone Manta Ray developed for DARPA. But while we've only seen concepts and pictures before, now there's video evidence. The drone, which was in development for four years, finally passed the first test dive. The Manta Ray is designed for extended underwater missions without human control. The hydrodynamic hull and the buoyancy system, which allows the drone to move mainly by going up in the water and then floating down, extends the duration of missions to several months. Also, the device can lay low for quite some time and wait for a command signal, all the while saving energy. New humanoid robots appear almost every week, and some of them are already being mass-produced. But these are just bodies, and to make them useful, you need systems that make it easy to teach them new tasks. And this past week, researchers have unveiled several new approaches and ways demonstrated on the low-cost H1 humanoid platform from Unitree Robotics. For example, Stanford engineers showed how the Human Plus system works, which can be used to teach robots new movements and autonomous skills based on videos of humans. Specifically, scientists first trained their system with reinforcement learning, i.e. trial and error, in a simulation where they had already collected data on human movements from about 40 hours of video. And then, they transferred this know-how to the real world by allowing humanoid robots to follow human body and hand movements in real time using only an RGB camera. The robot would then mimic human actions and humans would correct its movements using teleoperation if necessary. Let's hope they'll use Michael Jackson videos soon and then send their robot to the moon so that it could literally moonwalk. And engineers from Carnegie Mellon University's Flexible Robotics Lab also reported on their research with the same robot H1. They presented Omni H2O, which stands for Human to Humanoid, a learning-based system for teleoperation and autonomous whole-body operation of a humanoid bot. It uses human kinematic posture as a universal control interface. This allows the humanoid robot to be controlled in a variety of ways, including real-time teleoperation through a VR headset, verbal instructions, and an RGB camera. Also, once trained in teleoperated demonstrations, the Omni H2O allows the robot to operate autonomously, and the system can also be connected to GPT-4. The same engineers also presented WoCoCo, controlling a humanoid with sequential contacts. This system is also based on reinforcement learning. You can see the results achieved by Unitree Robotics H1 using WoCoCo on the screen. For example, H1 has mastered a variety of parkour jumps, clapping hands, moving boxes, and other tricks. In April this year, for the first time, a drone delivered cargo and removed garbage on Mount Everest. Such an experiment was conducted in Nepal by DJI engineers. The Flightcart 30 drone brought three oxygen tanks and three pounds or one and a half kilos of other cargo from base camp to Camp 1, three and a half miles or six kilometers above sea level. The drone did not go back empty-handed and picked up trash from Camp 1. Good boy. 
Usually, this is done by local guides who travel up to 30 times a season over one of the most dangerous stages of Everest climbing, the Kumbu Icefall. This journey takes all night since the ice is more stable then, but still involves serious risks. The drone flight, on the other hand, took 12 minutes there and back, risk-free. Now, according to reports, the drone flies regularly. And even though that's cool, once DJI flies all the bodies out of there, then we'll be impressed. And looks like NASA finally got a break. They were on a bad streak, experiencing difficulties at every stage of their mission to return people to the moon, pushing back their deadlines. But at least, they were able to overcome malfunctions and restore data transmission from the Voyager 1 spacecraft, which was launched about 50 years ago. It's now at a distance of 15 billion miles or 24 billion kilometers from Earth. Now Voyager measures plasma waves, magnetic fields and particles in interstellar space and beams this info back to Washington. Sooner or later, the machine will fail, but apparently it won't happen because of a breakdown, but because of a gradual decline in the power of thermoelectric generators. Each of them loses about 4 watts a year due to the decay of plutonium-238 in their nuclear batteries, although some scientists are optimistic, saying that Voyager still has another 10 years to go. That's it for this week's news, folks. If you feel like we missed something, let us know in the comments or via email. Otherwise, subscribe, like our videos, and check out our social networks for more from the world of high tech.